We're considering basic RTL constructs, and let's begin with the notion of the register transfer statement. The register transfer statement is a bit like an equation in that the left-hand side uh, we can think of as a variable. In this case, it's the name of a register. And the arrow uh, indicates that on the next clock cycle, we fill the register with whatever we have on the right-hand side of our register transfer statement. So we really can put down anything we like here. I'll just generically call this some value right now. Now in lab view, our register is implemented by a feedback node. And we can find the feedback node under the programming palette and I'll orient this in the other direction so that the input to the register shows up on the left side and the output on the right side. Now it doesn't have any data type yet, so I'll go ahead and initialize this with a constant and I set the data type of the constant here and now we see that the register has assumed the color or the characteristic color of the integer. Let me create an indicator here and I'll name the indicator the same as the register contents. To match the register transfer statement that I have right now we could say that the register gets filled with value that's presented on that control called value. Now to make time advance, that is on each clock cycle, it gets filled with that value, we can wrap this in a while loop. All right, that's the basic implementation in LabVIEW of our very simple register transfer statement. Normally you find that you need to give different values to the register at different times. Imagine we had two different values that need to be presented to the register A. Well, we can't really give two different values simultaneously to A. Therefore, we need some conditions to indicate which of these register transfer statements is, register transfer statements is actually active. We do this by using a colon notation in front of the register transfer statement and then give it some condition that when that condition is true, then we invoke that particular statement. So for example, we could say that when the register is enabled, then A gets filled with value. However, if it is not enabled, and I'll indicate not by putting the complement symbol above enable, then A is supposed to get filled with its present value. So this gives us a practical design for a register that only stores the new value when it is enabled. Or we could say that it stores the new value on demand. Otherwise, it maintains that stored value. All right, let's take a look at extending our earlier work in LabVIEW to accommodate this enable signal. And so I need to give a little bit of extra space here. I first hold down the control key and then click and drag with my left mouse button. The data selector is our two to one mux or multiplexer. For its selector terminal, we have a Boolean control and this will match our enable signal. We see that when enable is true, we want A to get filled with value. Therefore, the data selector should pass value through to the feedback node. However, if enable is in fact false, then it should get filled with whatever is in A right now. So we'll feedback the value of A 
to the data selector input, and then ultimate, ultimately I can then connect or finish the connection here. So our data selector then implements this notion of picking the appropriate register transfer statement. Some alternative notations that you might find helpful. You can really make this look much like a mathematical uh, equation in the sense that you could say, well, A gets filled with value when this condition is true. Otherwise, it gets filled with that value, A, for this condition that is not enable. Or another notation that's borrowing from the so-called ternary assignment operator from both the C language and the Verilog language looks like this. We test a condition, the question mark then finishes the statement of the condition. So we say, does this condition evaluate to true? That is, is enable in fact true? If yes, the value that gets passed to A is listed next. Otherwise, and that's the colon, Otherwise, the value that gets passed over is whatever is in A right now. So we think of this as that's the value we use if the condition is true. This is the value if we use that, that we use if the condition is false. And lastly, you can draw these data path structures out by hand. We use the rectangle symbol to denote the register. We have our characteristic trapezoid symbol for a mux, and I'm drawing a two to one mux operated by the enable as the data selector. When enable is one, the mux passes whatever is uh, connected to the one input, that would be value. Otherwise, it passes this value coming back from A.